Good afternoon, everyone. This is Heather slash Hetty from Twitter slash Facebook slash YouTube, Ning, um, a little bit of all the different network networks out there. Um, you know, this is a part two of the one I posted yesterday, and it's just in regards to um, Jesus' amazing love for every single one of us. Um, you know, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we are at the time believing or not believing in, you know, he still has his arms wide open, you know, waiting for us. And um, one of my key favorite verses um you know, from the Bible was from Ephesians 1, and that was verse 4, saying, Long ago, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Meaning, wow, with all of the stuff that we do do or we go through or that, you know, happens, you know, he is just there waiting for us with open arms for us to just call to him and say, we need you. And, you know, as I said before, you know, it took me 26 years to really figure that out. Um, it was 19 of them that I was absolutely clueless. And so, you know, it was a good, what, what's a total of that, about seven of it, that I basically rejected. So, um, you know, and it was worth every, you know, pain and suffering and, you know, um, everything that I went through or put my own self through. Um, you know, the devil works in absolute, just atrocious ways. And, um, we don't help that in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, he's great at temptation, and he knows our um, where where to tempt us. He knows our low points, and you know, for a very long time, um, as I've said before, was um, after my ex beat me was addiction. Um, I got addicted to my anti seizure med, and to numb the pain was to take just more and more and more of it. And because I didn't know Jesus yet, didn't know how to call on him for love and for help and to give him all my pain. And so I would get a knock on the door basically from Satan saying, hmm, do you see everything in that bottle, Heather? You know, and do I sit here, do I blame that? No, because it's still free will. And do we have the brain to say yes or no? We sure do. But to know Jesus... And to know him more and more, he gives us that strength to say no to those type of temptations. And that's going to James, where, you know, when we call on the Lord, you know, and we ask him for that strength, he's able to tell, you know, the devil to flee. We are able to tell him to flee as we reach out to Jesus. And that, to me, is just a big, absolute must and gives absolute strength. And, you know, for people who, you know, don't believe, it's, you know, it's a tough, tough life. And I lived it, and we may think it's comfortable, um, but to be honest with you, the down days um, definitely aren't as down as when you do find Jesus. And, you know, the up days... I will sit here and say are much more just rejoicing, you know, when we do know him. And, you know, people of all different faiths, I know, have all their different ways of um, rejoicing and such. And as I've said, you know, I am friends with every single type of person. Um, I'm not the one to judge. And I was uh, basically kind of questioned on, should I? Um, there's a yes and there's a no to that. You know, should I? In some circumstances, okay. 
Um, what I'm sitting here and saying is that I am not Jesus. I am not God. I'm not the one to sit here and say, you are not going to heaven because you don't believe. Um, but there are certain aspects that, you know, you have to put up boundaries if they're interfering with your faith, um, such as, you know, my ex, you know, definitely was interfering with me ever finding Jesus and then interfering with me growing in my faith. And I had to put up boundaries, you know, there. Um, and, you know, same as today, even with um, my brother, I have to put up boundaries because I love him dearly, but has so many different addiction issues. And I mean, I could go down a list, but beside the point and doesn't know Jesus. And, you know, I, you know, he can't bring that into my household without getting the right type of help. And definitely the right type of help would be starting with Jesus and, you know, just isn't going down that road. And, you know, you have to set up boundaries. You still have to love, though. That is the key, key, key factor that I think everyone just a lot of time look over in the Bible. I'm not sitting here saying just, oh, you killed someone and just, oh, come into my house and I love you. That is not the point. The point is, is that we set up our boundaries, but we are still to share his love and to just love through him, which is to be more Christ-like because he was, is just so amazing. He, back in his day when he was on earth, was the one who sat with you know, the prostitutes, the killers, you know, the robbers, you know, go on the list of everything that if we were confronted, hey, sit at this table with all of, you know, when we had that choice, would we do that? And, you know, and that's the amazing day points and times these days when, you know, churches do go out and they visit prisons. And that I applaud because that's showing that love through Jesus to people who have done very wrong, yet, you know what, he gives more than second chances, and there's a boundary, you know, obviously, there's a big boundary when you're visiting a prison, but we share that faith, um, are we sitting here saying, hey, let's come on over to my house and play basketball, or, you know, let's hang out at the pool, that's not what I'm saying, I'm just saying that love is the most amazing thing to give through Christ. And I'm not saying through you. Um, if we gave love through us to everybody, then we would have a disaster in marriages. We would have a disaster um, in, just in life in general because um, love isn't true unless it's actually through Jesus and for him. Um, but beside the point, you know, um, I just am one who am, you know, I understand when people sit here and have argumentative points back and forth, and it's not like I haven't had that. It's not like I just didn't get completely cut off from one person that we became close friends on Twitter, and he knocked me off because we um, didn't see eye to eye on one aspect of um, our faith in Christ, and that is two of the same faith, absolute same faith. And, you know... That, to me, is a huge no. We're still supposed to always, you know, you know, grow together. And if one doesn't have that same, exact same point, you know, so be it. Um, you can give your aspect and you can give your viewpoints and you can open your Bible and give your reasonings. But no matter what, God is the judge. And, you know, especially if it doesn't have much to do with what's, what's going on. And um, the point of the reason is, is that, you know, it was questioned about faith. And my deal is, is that I love everybody. And I welcome everybody into my Twitter because I want to share his love with everybody. And that's what he didn't like. And, and that's the whole point of this. And I welcome all of you. So come visit me at Alive in Me on Twitter. Um, and God bless each and every one of you. And I hope not to confuse you any. And God bless your whole week. And pray that you have a great day, day today.